Bone tumors are a diverse group, ranging from benign growths to aggressive malignancies. Understanding the spectrum is crucial to avoid misdiagnosis and unnecessary treatments. Let's delve into the world of bone tumors. Different bone lesions have predilection for specific age groups. Age alone can significantly narrow the differential diagnosis before imaging analysis begins. 2. Dot tumor location. Tumor location within the skeleton, flat versus tubular bones. And within long bones, epiphysis, metaphysis, diaphysis offers vital diagnostic clues. For instance, osteosarcoma often arises in metaphyseal regions due to rapid bone growth, whereas Ewing sarcoma favors diaphyseal locations. For instance, osteosarcoma often arises in metaphyseal regions due to rapid bone growth, while Ewing sarcoma favors diaphyseal locations. Recognizing these patterns aids in accurate diagnosis. Benign tumors, non-life-threatening growths, for example, fibrous dysplasia, malignant tumors, cancerous and aggressive, for example, osteosarcoma. Reactive lesions, non-neoplastic lesions mimicking tumors, for example, bone infarcts. Metabolic abnormalities, disorders like hyperparathyroidism causing bone lesions. Tumor-like conditions, lesions resembling tumors radiographically but not neoplastic, for example, bone cysts. Key learning point, recognizing the wide variety of bone abnormalities prevents misdiagnosis and unnecessary interventions. Age-related trends in bone lesions. Age group benign lesions, malignant lesions. Before 20 years, fibrous cortical defect, non-ossifying fibrome, simple bone cyst, osteoid osteoma, chondroblastoma leukemia, Ewing sarcoma, conventional osteosarcoma, neuroblastoma, rhabdomyosarcoma. 20, 40 years and chondroma, giant cell tumor, osteoblastoma, chondromyxoid fibroma, parasteal osteosarcoma, adamantinoma. Over 40 years, fibrous dysplasia, Paget disease, intraosseous lipoma, metastatic carcinoma, most common, myeloma, chondrosarcoma, malignant fibrous histiocytoma, osteosarcoma secondary to Paget's disease. Pro tip, if a 50-year-old patient presents with a bone lesion, always consider metastasis, multiple myeloma, or a lymphoma before thinking of primary bone tumors. Two key factors in narrowing a diagnosis. One dot patient age. Different bone lesions have predilection for specific age groups. Age alone can significantly narrow the differential diagnosis before imaging analysis begins. Two dot tumor location. Tumor location within the skeleton, flat versus tubular bones. And within long bones, epiphysis, metaphysis, diaphysis offers vital diagnostic clues. For instance, osteosarcoma often arises in metaphyseal regions due to rapid bone growth, whereas Ewing sarcoma favors diaphyseal locations. Tumor location within bones offers diagnostic insights. Epiphyseal tumors are often benign, while metaphyseal regions may harbor aggressive lesions. Visual aids can help identify these areas effectively. Transverse locations also matter. Medullary processes like simple bone cysts differ from cortical surface lesions. Understanding these dimensions aids in precise diagnosis. Tumor location, longitudinal and transverse dimensions. Longitudinal locations within long bones. Epiphyseal, end of bone. Benign, chondroblastoma in younger patients, giant cell tumor, immature skeletons. Malignant, rarely clear cell chondrosarcoma. Metaphyseal, adjacent to growth plate. Benign, simple bone cysts, aneurysmal bone cysts, and chondromas. Malignant, conventional osteosarcoma, metastatic disease, myeloma. Diaphyseal shaft. Benign, fibrous dysplasia, Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Malignant, Ewing sarcoma, lymphoma, myeloma. Transverse locations. Medullary, central processes like simple bone cysts. Cortical, surface lesions like osteoid osteoma. Juxtacortical, surface-lying tumors such as periosteal osteosarcoma. Radiographic features the core of diagnosis. 1. Margins and zone of transition. Non-aggressive lesions, well-defined margins with a narrow zone of transition, for example, intraosseous lipoma. Aggressive lesions, ill-defined margins with a broad zone of transition, for example, osteosarcoma. 2. Periosteal reaction types. 
solid, unilemylated, indicate slow-growing, non-aggressive lesions, for example, osteoid osteoma, onion skin, multilamellated, associated with intermediate aggressiveness, for example, Ewing sarcoma, spiculated, hair on end or sunburst, suggests rapid aggressive growth, for example, osteosarcoma, Codman triangle, raised periosteum, forming an angular appearance, typically linked to aggressive lesions. Three, mineralization patterns. Chondral mineralization, punctate or arc-like calcifications indicating cartilage-based lesions, for example, in chondroma. Osseous mineralization, dense, fluffy, or cloud-like mineralization, typical of bone-producing tumors, for example, osteosarcoma. Additional diagnostic clues. Lesion size. Nidus smaller 1.5 cm, likely osteoid osteoma. Nidus larger 1.5 cm, suggests osteoblastoma. Number of lesions. Single lesion, likely a primary bone tumor. Multiple lesions, often due to metastatic disease, myeloma, or systemic conditions like hyperparathyroidism. Soft tissue component. Suggest malignancy if there's cortical destruction with soft tissue mass, for example, osteosarcoma or lymphoma. For example, a solid periosteal reaction indicates slow-growing lesions, while a speculated pattern suggests rapid growth. Recognizing these features is essential for accurate diagnosis. Lesion size and number can indicate tumor nature. A single lesion often suggests a primary bone tumor, while multiple lesions may point to metastatic disease. Soft tissue components often suggest malignancy, Endosteel scalloping and cortical ballooning indicate aggressive lesions. Soft tissue masses suggest malignant infiltration. These clues are vital in forming a comprehensive diagnosis. Endosteel scalloping suggests aggressive lesions expanding outward. Cortical ballooning indicates slow expansion, while saucerization points to outer cortical erosion. Recognizing these signs is crucial for diagnosis. Soft tissue masses indicate possible malignant infiltration through the cortex. Understanding these patterns helps in distinguishing between benign and malignant conditions. CT and MRI scans complement radiographs for a comprehensive diagnosis. CT is ideal for detecting fine mineralization, while MRI assesses soft tissue involvement and staging. Always interpret MRI and CT findings alongside plain radiographs for accurate diagnosis. Advanced imaging refines your diagnosis when necessary. Anteroposterior radiograph of the hip in a 17-year-old patient shows lucent, mildly expansive lesion arrows in the greater trochanter, an epiphyseal equivalent, representing chondroblastoma. Type 1, a geographic lesion. A. Diagram shows well-defined lucency with sclerotic rim. B. Lateral radiograph shows intraosseous lipoma of the calcaneus with a sclerotic rim arrows. Type 1C geographic lesion. A. Diagram shows ill-defined lytic lesion. Adapted and reprinted with permission from reference 1. B. Lateral radiograph of femur in patient with osteosarcoma shows large ill-defined lytic lesion large black arrows. Note Codman triangles, large white arrows, periosteal interruption, small white arrow, and tumor-induced new bone production, small black arrow. The diaphyseal location is unusual for osteosarcoma. Type 2 moth-eaten lesion. A. The diagram shows patchy lysis of the medullary cavity. B. Antero-posterior radiograph of osteosarcoma shows ill-defined patchy lytic lesion involving medullary cavity, long solid arrows, and cortex open arrow. Also note multilamellated periosteal reaction, short solid arrows. Type 3 permeated lytic lesion. A. Diagram shows small patchy lucencies in medullary cavity. B. Antero-posterior radiograph shows fine permeated pattern involving the cortex and medullary, space of diametaphysis of the proximal portion of the tibia, arrows in a patient with Ewing sarcoma, unilamellated periosteal reaction, A diagram shows a single layer of reactive periosteum arrow, B anteroposterior radiograph of the knee in patient with hypertrophic osteoarthropathy shows thick unilamellated periosteal reaction arrows, 
multilamellated periosteal reaction. A diagram shows multilamellated or onion skin periosteal reaction arrow. B anteroposterior radiograph in a patient with osteosarcoma shows multilamellated periosteal reaction arrow in proximal portion of femur. Note also large surrounding soft tissue mass. See also figure 6B. Image courtesy of David Disler, Maryland Commonwealth Radiology, Richmond V. Perpendicular periosteal reaction. A. Diagram shows spiculated or hair on end periosteal reaction arrow. B. Diagram shows radial or sunburst periosteal reaction arrow. C. Anteroposterior radiograph inpatient with osteosarcoma shows marked perpendicular periosteal reaction in proximal portion of femur. Image courtesy of Marsha Blackson, Maryland University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey, Newark, New Jersey. Codman Triangle. A. Diagram shows elevated periosteum arrow forming an angle with the cortex. B. Lateral radiograph in patient with osteosarcoma shows the elevated periosteum forming Codman Triangle long arrow. Notice the tumor induced new bone formation, short arrows. Aneurysmal bone cysts. A. Anteroposterior radiograph of the pelvis shows expansiolytic lesion of right acetabulum with thinning of the cortex arrow and honeycomb trabeculation. Flat bones are a common location for aneurysmal bone cysts. Image courtesy of Marsha Blackson, Maryland, University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey, Newark, New Jersey. B. Anteroposterior radiograph of proximal portion of tibia and fibula shows expansilytic lesion in proximal fibular metaphysis with mild honeycombing black arrows. Eccentric origin of the lesion is hard to appreciate in thin bones such as the fibula. Both cortices are ballooned, with focal loss laterally, white arrow. Image courtesy of David Disler, Maryland, Commonwealth Radiology, Richmond Va. C. Anteroposterior radiograph of distal forearm and wrist shows more. Typical eccentric location of aneurysmal bone cyst in distal metaphysis of the radius, although this particular lesion lacks a honeycomb appearance. Cortex on radial side is very thin, arrows. Image courtesy of Bernard Gelman, Maryland Hospital for Special Surgery, New York, New York. Chondral mineralization. A. Diagram shows patterns and of mineralization of cartilaginous tumor matrix, stippled, left, flocculent, middle, and ring and arc, right. B. Lateral radiograph of proximal portion of tibia shows enchondroma with punctate and arc-like mineralization arrows. Diagram shows patterns of mineralization of osseous matrix with solid left, cloud-like, middle, and ivory-like right opacity. Buttress periosteal reaction. A. Diagram shows beak-like solid periosteal buttress formation, arrow. B. Anteroposterior radiograph of humerus in a patient with periosteal chondrosarcoma shows periosteal buttress, short white arrow. Note well-defined saucerization of humeral shaft, black arrows, and faint mineralization of the matrix, long white arrow. Here is a simple topic callout scene. It allows you to talk about different topics with a small description on each one. While radiographs often provide the first and sometimes sufficient insight, CT scans, useful for detecting fine mineralization, ideal for evaluating cortical bone destruction, MRI, best for assessing soft tissue involvement and staging, helps monitor chemotherapy response in malignant tumors. Clinical tip, Always interpret MRI and CT findings in conjunction with plain radiographs for accurate diagnosis. Conclusion, a structured approach to bone tumor diagnosis. Radiographs remain the cornerstone of bone tumor diagnosis. By focusing on patient age lesion location and key radiographic features, you can narrow down differentials effectively before using advanced imaging. Key takeaways for residents. Start with patient age and lesion location. Analyze margins, periosteal reaction, mineralization, and cortical involvement. Use advanced imaging to refine your diagnosis when needed. If you found this breakdown helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more orthopedic education content. Stay sharp, stay informed, and keep learning. This video has been produced from an article. We would like to thank author Theodore T. Miller. The citation has been shown below. 
Anyone who would like the original article, see below. Thank you for watching. Remember, understanding bone tumors is key to effective diagnosis and treatment. Let's continue learning together.